Thank you for watching Back Porch Wisdom with Pastor Rob Wynn. We pray that this weekly broadcast will be a blessing to you. And now here is Pastor Rob Wynn with today's message. Hey, this is Pastor Rob. Welcome to Back Porch Wisdom today. We're talking still about the ABCs of faith, and we know faith is a substance, and it assures us that we are going to, we have what we hope for and cannot see. And then we know that's the first premise of the ABCs of faith. And then the second is that uh, faith comes by hearing. Uh, how does faith come? It comes by hearing. And so does doubt and unbelief. They come by hearing. So, but it depends on the message you're hearing. So God's kingdom is not like the world's kingdom. The world's kingdom is, uh, they're letting anything go in on sin, all kind of sin. They're talking about uh, good is evil and evil is good now. And, uh, but it, in God's kingdom, evil is evil and good is good. And good to God is being beneficial in all its effects. And so faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the message. And we know by Mark 4, I believe it's the 26th verse where it says, The kingdom of God is as if a man sowed seed in the ground. He's talking about the heart. And we know the heart has got four different stages to it. It's got wayside or hard ground and the, the devil comes immediately to steal it. We've got rocky ground, and the rocky ground is people, in they're happy about hearing the word, but then uh, persecution comes in, and, and they forsake the word uh, because of it. And then there's uh, thorny ground or weedy ground. That means we live in the world. We're around people don't, that aren't believers all the time. And so if you listen to them, you won't be, you won't be operating in God kind of faith. And then uh, there's the good ground that accepts the Word. It's not talking about interpreting, talking about accepting the Word into its heart, and then it never digs it up, and it lets it come to fruition, or it, make, or it lets it come to a full growth. And then uh, what faith does, I'm, I'm uh, turning there, but it, faith is important. While we're going there, faith is important because you can't please God without faith. First John 5 says, The one that is born again subdues the world, and this is the means by which you subdue the world, faith, even our faith. Well, you could say it like this. Uh, the one that is born of God subdues the world, and this is the means by which we subdue the world, faith from us and you know where we get that faith we get it from jesus christ and so faith is important because you just can't please god without it and so what does faith do well number one uh, we need to look in romans the first chapter the 17th verse for faith will produce more faith and it will do it by hearing the word and in Romans 1.17, it says this, For in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed by both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed through the way of faith that arises to more faith. As it is written, The man who through faith is just and upright shall live and shall live by faith. Well, you see some, some important facts in there. Now, I'm talking about godly facts. Is, is that first of all, it says, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. Well, uh, Romans 10, I believe it's verse 4, says that Jesus Christ is our righteousness. So if He's in your heart and you're doing what you know to do to live according to what would be in Christ, then, uh, then, then you're righteous. And uh, it's important that you know that. It's kind of like the Constitution says that, that uh, all men are created equal and have unalienable rights of life, li of the pursuit of life, liberty, and, and happiness. Well, unalienable means that by, because they were given to you by God, nobody can take them away. And because they were given to you by God, 
you can't you can't necessarily give them up although you can turn your back on God so but they're not going to be retracted from God now man keeps trying to retract them uh, because during this pandemic they told us we couldn't do this we couldn't do that but the Constitution says we're free to meet if you want to meet you can meet and it doesn't make any difference if it's a hundred a thousand or are two people but we do have the right to and then you see that once it's revealed to you by the word faith uh, comes and it springs from faith from Jesus and it leads to Jesus and it is closed through the way of Jesus and it arises to more Jesus because faith comes from Jesus that's uh, Hebrews 12, 2. And so uh, I like that version of what it says right there. Now, in Ephesians 3, I, I like it when it says this. It starts off in verse 12. It says, For in whom we ha have access, and, uh, well, let me turn there because I don't want to miss that. Okay, I'm going to have to turn in my Bible. So you turn to Ephesians 3. And verse 12. So, man, isn't God good? I'm telling you what, life is really good when you, when you are walking in Christ. Okay, verse 12 says, In whom we have boldness and confident access to God because of Christ's, that, that's His faithfulness or His faith. And for this reason, I ask you not to lose heart because of what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. In other words, Paul says, don't take your eye off the ball. Don't take your eye off the Word, off Jesus. It says, for this reason, I bow my knee before the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that He would grant unto you according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart by Christ Jesus, that we being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height, and another love of Christ that passes knowledge that we might be filled with all the fullness of God now unto Him that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. So we, we know that, uh, you know, faith is an action ver uh, noun or verb. In other words, and this is how, how you know it. 1 John three nineteen says, This is how we know that we belong to the truth or a faith and how we set our hearts at rest in His presence. If our heart condemns us, we know that God is greater than our heart and He knows everything. In other words, you're going the wrong way or doing the wrong thing. Dear friends, if your heart does not condemn you, we have confidence before God and receive from Him anything we ask because we keep His commandments and do what is pleasing to Him. In other words, we walk in faith. And then there's seven characteristics of faith that we either realize or do. Faith believes God has done and will do exactly as He says He would. Faith is fully persuaded by the Word of God alone or only. Faith holds fast its original confidence when tested. Faith is totally occupied with the Word of God. Faith does not waver, it doesn't cast away its confidence when the visible encouragement is in, removed. Faith has actions, and faith can fail or be omitted or lie dormant. Faith produces actions. You think about Abraham, and we'll leave off with this. God told him to sacrifice his own son, and you know by Hebrews 11 that he received him from the dead in a vision or what he couldn't see. And then he told him to go to a certain place, so it took him two or three days or more to get there at least. And then they go up on the mountain, just he and him, and carry the wood and carry the knife and, and he tie, and the rope, and he ties up uh, uh, Isaac and puts him on the altar. 
and raises the, the uh, uh, knife to kill him. And uh, then the, the Lord says, uh, don't harm him. He said, I will provide myself a lamb. And he already has done that. Jesus came to defeat the works of the devil, and he already has. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. So let's pray if you've never asked Jesus into your heart or your backslidden. Father, I thank you that you, uh, I received Jesus as Lord and Savior, and I believe that he's raised from the dead. And uh, I thank you for causing me to be your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, look on Cornerstone Church, the number, le- the, the number for the letter U.com, or Robert Wynn, W-Y-N-N-E, at Back Porch Wisdom on YouTube. God bless you, and have a great day. If you're ever in the Linden, Alabama area, we invite you to worship with us at Cornerstone Church. For more information and other resources, visit our website at cornerstonechurchforyou.com. Thank you.